With almost every plank installation, some demo and prep are very likely. Now carpet is the easiest demo without a doubt. As you can see with a few tools, such as a utility knife, an eight inch scraper, which by the way, you can purchase at any of the box stores, a pry bar and a little bit of planning, this isn't gonna be very hard at all. Now, if you save a piece of pad, you can use it to roll the tack strip into in the end. This will save you from a mess and from getting poked by those little pins. Now, as tempting as it is, don't leave the base on. Leaving it on will only make the install harder for you. I only leave it on if I would be causing damage to the base when I remove it. This is higher than this side over here. And then we'll get the proper height that we need once we put this down. So I added a quarter inch birch underlayment to get all the floors level with each other. Now when fastening this, I staple every four to six inches throughout the main part of the sheet and every inch on the seams. This will be sure that none of the underlayment will bubble up. Then I went around the house to find some dips and humps that might need some attention. And I mixed up some floor fill and I got to work on filling the dips. Now you can also use Henry's 549, which is found at both Home Depot and Lowe's. You can also use thin set in larger areas. And then once I find any dips, I like to overfill them using a notch trawl, and then I'll screed them with a level or a two by four. Then I come back and give it one more coat to make the area flat and smooth. Hey, I'm Joe Latender. Now I truly believe that everything I'm about to show you inside this video it's going to give you confidence to take on your own project without fear. Now, I created a playlist on my channel. It's called Plank Boot Camp. Now, inside Plank Boot Camp, you're going to find videos that will give you more guidance and more detailed instructions of different parts of this video. For example, here's a video on floor prep. Now, something most of you probably fear. I share easy to use common sense methods in this video and I'll give you access to all my secrets. Now I'll also share with you tools that you can get and products and where you can get them at a reasonable price. Now here's another video that may help you. Now before you consider using self leveler, I would watch video number 15. I have videos on demo, which is video number seven. And if you need info on building up the floor, I'd watch video number four. Now I suggest that you pause this video and grab yourself a piece of paper and a pen and write down different times in this video where you can come back to this video and watch something that you had that, oh, so that's how you do that moment, right? So it makes it so much easier for you to write that down, have it written down, and when you need to get to that and you can't remember where the heck was that, instead of going through my video another hundred times to find it, Boom, it's right there on your piece of paper. Right now I wanna to talk to you about how to figure out plank direction and where you wanna start. Now this can be really easy to figure out. I like to have the plank run down the length of the hallway. It looks a lot better going down a long hallway this way if it's parallel to the long walls in the hallway instead of like the short way, like it's gonna be in this spot over here and over here where the hallway tees. The other thing I look for too is like long rooms with long walls. Having the plank run parallel to those looks a lot nicer. Now I'm to a point where I wanna figure out my layout. You can see how I have the fireplace here. I have this heater, this baseboard heat that's in here. It kinda of makes it a pain in the butt. Now I don't wanna start on the outside wall I'm going to pull this floor out away and we're going to start out in front of all of these things, including the fireplace. And then we'll come back at the very end and we'll install those first two or three rows last. It's just going to make it easy for us to get a good start. And that's what we really want is a good solid start where we have a good foundation to build from. So now I'm just laying out plank one row here. And then we're gonna figure out exactly where this needs to be positioned. But before I cut this last piece, I need to make sure it's straight. Because if, if I cut it now, it could be long or short. So I'm just gonna measure now and see and get this into position. Let's talk about where you would start. Now, I do not like to use transitions and doorways that would break rooms up. Like for example, going into this office right here, I would not put a transition there to go into there. I also would not into this bathroom. And if I was doing this bedroom, I wouldn't use one there either. I like to flow the plank so it continues 
and it's nice and free flowing and you don't have those ugly transitions. When you install plank, you want to flow the plank so that it can continue on where you're always working forward. Here is where this plank has the groove. It's on this end right here and on this long end right here. Now every plank manufacturer does this different, so be sure you know what your tongue and groove is on your plank. So this would be the tongue side and this would be the tongue side. Now here's the starting wall I'm thinking I want to start off of. And the tongue always faces that wall. So that means I would always be working away from the groove this way and this way as much as possible. If I work against away from the tongue, that's what I would consider working backwards. And so when I'm looking to where I want to start, I try to take that into consideration. Now working backwards isn't difficult, but it's a little more time consuming. You want to just try to avoid as much as you can. So if I started down here instead of working my way throughout all of this and I flow through the kitchen here too, keep going through, and then I come through and meet through the hall here. Right here, I would end up having to work backwards then, away from the tongue, because this would be the tongue side. So that would be working backwards down into this hall, into this bathroom. That's not too bad. That's not too big of an area. You can see that I don't have very much working backwards at all. Okay, so it can be really hard to move this plank around and keep it together while you're doing this. So I have it somewhat close, but now to make sure that I'm actually gonna be absolutely straight, I'm gonna straddle some planks. You're just forcing everything together now to get straight. So you can see how I have a plank, about the even amount on each side of this joint. Now I'm not gonna connect these on the butt joints. I'm just gonna slide them and get them tight or perfectly in on the length. And then I'm just gonna slide it forward so that I still leave a gap right there, but it's not attached. And I keep doing this all the way down. So I need to be at 45 and a 16th. So again, I'm just measuring it. If I need to adjust, then I just move the floor to adjust. I cut scraps. And now we're gonna use these scraps to secure the floor and I'll show you how right now. So once you get it there, then just keep screwing it. And I'm always keeping my knee on here so that this doesn't move at all. I'm sure some of you are thinking, okay, that's great, Joe. You're on a wood subfloor. You can use screws. I'm on concrete. What should I do? Well, you can get these glue sticks and I'll leave a link. Now, this isn't a glue stick that you would get from Menards or Home Depot or Walmart or craft stores. This is a special kind of glue that is meant to stick to concrete. So you want to take the glue gun and give yourself like a Hershey kiss. Make it like a Hershey kiss. Now you just take it, you lock in your scrap piece like normal and set it right down into that glue. And make sure your measurements are good. And then just wait. It takes about five minutes for this glue to get hard, okay? before you wanna start working off of it. Okay, I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna jump in because I'm sure you're wondering what the heck is going on? Did I miss something? No, you didn't. I just wanted to show you some things real quick before I show you now what I'm gonna show you. Anyway, so in, in this video, I have this fireplace here and what I'm doing is I'm starting the plank out in front of that fireplace. I wanna start away from the wall so I can get a couple of rows installed or one row at least installed and get myself a good solid foundation without having to worry about cutting around this fireplace and scribing to this wall and not miscutting things and getting everything perfectly straight. It's just so much easier guys to leave out at least one row or come out in front of something like this fireplace and then start. And then later on, when this installation's all done, we'll come back and easily install these rows back into place. So let's get rid of the fireplace. I wanna show you how to do this super easily. So let's put five plank together. And I'm gonna say that these plank are a perfect five inches. So if I measure from here to here, that's five inches. I'm only measuring the face of the plank, the finished part, not including the locking system. So that means five planks for me would equal 25 inches. Just measure from here to here and you'll get the 25 inches. Okay, so I wanna leave out this first row. 
But I don't want it to just be a full piece because there's going to be jogs in this wall. There's going to be curves and bows in. And then if we try to run a full plank from end to end, well, there's a good chance that we'll have some gaps in there that the base might not cover. Or we'll have little tiny pieces that we'll have to cut off. And it's just a lot easier to take a little bit more off than just a little bit. Okay, so let's just figure that we want to at least take one inch off. One inch off this first row. So easily, just take whatever your five plank total is, minus one inch. So in my example, that's 24 inches. So I'm just going to measure up 24 inches. I'm going to make a mark there. Come down here, measure up 24 inches, make a mark there. And now you just want to snap that line all the way through. Okay, hit your marks perfectly. Now you can just take your first plank and put it up against the wall here. Now remember, tongue side always faces your starting wall. Now, I want this to be four inches or a plank or less away, okay? Just get it close to that because here's our spot right here. This is the plank that is going here, right? Now, this one right here is this plank, right? So now we want this plank to be the distance between this line and this plank to be this distance right here, these three plank, right? One, two, three. So that, in my example, would be 15 inches. So now I want to just go ahead and start installing the rest of my plank. Now, I never cut that last piece until I get this all straight so I don't miscut it. And I just get this all installed. And now we're going to make sure we get this all the 15 inches away. But I like to take it a step further, like I was showing you, and straddle these pieces to help keep this straight while we're maneuvering it around. It makes it more solid. Just, just go ahead and connect the long part, leave a gap in between the short joints, and then just go ahead and do that all the way down. But now the measurement that you're going to use for this, because this plank right here is now this one, right? So now we would just be measuring from whatever this distance is from here to here. So these two planks. So that's 10 inches. So I'd start getting all of this 10 inches away. Once I get it there, then I'm going to start securing this floor with those scrap pieces like I was just showing you in the video. If the piece that's down already has the groove, reverse the cut so now that the tongue is showing. Stick that up against the wall. Now you can use the locking system as your guide for the expansion joint. So just mark it right where the tongue ends. And now you can just cut this off and that will get flipped around and it'll go right back into place. Now there's a couple ways to cut this. You can use a utility knife and a square where you just score it. Some vinyl planks are harder than others so you might need to score twice, especially when you're cutting off little pieces and it should just snap right off. And you can just cut this pad if you want, which isn't really going to be a big deal. Here's the piece that I glued and you can see this sucker is really secure. And then at the very end, I'll pry that up and we'll scrape that glue off. Now getting these first few rows done, it's going to be a really big win for you. I, I just know you're going to feel good about it. And you secured that floor. You don't have to deal with those spacers with the floor moving. You didn't have to really do any difficult cuts in the very beginning. You just got going. Boom, you're already going. You're ready to fly now. Okay, now if you're someone who's looking for a more precise layout, you want to decide where your plank's going to land and maybe in a hallway or in some doorways or decide how big of a piece will be somewhere and you don't want to just start like what I just showed you, go watch video number two and start at the seven minute and 54 second mark of that video and I'll give you a way to do a precise layout. I'll walk you through that. It's like a five or seven minute section of that video. Really worth watching, going and checking out if you're someone who really wants to get nerdy about the layout. And what we have here is a plank that we need to slide the joint in on the butt first. You need to lift up to get the butt joint in. And then at you get it nice and close and now we want to start tapping this into place by lifting this up and starting to work towards the joint. But you just have to lift it up at a slight angle. Now you don't want to kill it. Now I do have a small little gap right here. So I need to pull this apart 
and fix that. So you want to make sure you're looking for these gaps right away. Now I'm using a tapping block. You don't always have to use a tapping block, but I do. And this is one that you can get on online. I'll put a link down below if you want to purchase this particular one. This is a nice tapping block, good and solid. It's not cheap like the ones you get from the box stores. But what I want to show you here is you want to just go lightly, keeping one end on the plank and just come and swing it out lightly. And the thing that's nice with the little more heavy duty tapping block is you don't have to beat on the plank too much for it to work. Now, if you want, you can work on the plank from this side and, and, and instead of being on it, I like to be on it. It just makes it a little easier, I think. You can see it, I feel awkward doing it like this, but sometimes you have to. But the key is, is to get it up at an angle to get it to lock in. Now, some of you might have a drop and lock where you don't need to do it that way. Is all you do is you put the butt joint in, or last. So you get the length in, first slide it back, get it all the way tight to the butt joint, drop it, and then you'd pound this with the rubber mallet down into the joint. Now that's not gonna be hurtful because the rest of it is still there. Even if I had a couple more spots where it was damaged, it's gonna be okay. You just wanna make sure you get it out of the groove so that you don't have debris inside the groove. Now this is my cutoff from down there. I try to use these, bring them down. So if you cut something off from that end, bring it down to this end and try to use it. You don't wanna try to establish a pattern with this plank, but if you can use stuff up, then use stuff up. A lot of times too, when you're using a tapping block, like I was showing you earlier, it's easy to damage this tongue. If you just use a scrap piece that you cut and slide it in there and use the tapping block to beat on the scrap piece, that's gonna save your plank. It's gonna help you protect your locking system. All right, so after you do like two, three rows, you wanna just take a scrap piece and your tapping block, and you just wanna hit these together just to make sure everything is staying tight. Just give it a couple good whacks. And that's just gonna kind of force anything together just in case something maybe slipped out of joint a little bit. You can see how I'm staggering my plank. I don't have any pattern that I use to this. It's all I'm doing is making sure when I'm looking at it this way, I'm not ever lining up any of these small butt joints. I just wanna stagger them differently. And you also wanna kinda of keep them staggered at least, I would say at least eight inches. I like to lean more towards a foot from one another. I am gonna cut this right here and get this plank cut around it. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking a full plank here and I'm lining it up perfectly with this butt joint right here, acting like this is continuing on and I'm gonna line it up all the way down. Just make sure that you line the, the joints up, this joint and this joint and this joint. Okay, so when I'm talking about, about lining up the locking system, you can see that here's the locking system here, here's the locking system there on top, I just line them up perfectly so that these two edges are perfectly aligned and you can't see the one on the bottom. And then you can just take this cheater board. Now I've showed how to make this in other videos is all I do with the cheater board is I take the, the groove off. I cut the groove flush with the plank. And here's what it looks like before I cut it off. So I cut this off flush with this. Now you can adjust this. You could leave some more of this on if you want to have a bigger expansion joint. This tongue here is about an eighth inch and then I use a marker to mark. So by the time I get that marker next to it, we're looking at about a quarter inch expansion joint. But if you want to have bigger, you can just leave some of this groove on. But I cut it flush off. That's how I do it. Anyway, so I'm gonna take the cheater board here and just start marking this. I'm using a permanent marker here. Now you can use, if you use a permanent marker, you can take this off with denatured alcohol, hairspray, just alcohol, any, 
like rubbing alcohol, but you can also use like a dry erase marker that will come off easier. The problem with dry erase markers though is that they come off too easy. Here you can see how I'm lining my cheater board up. I'm gonna stick this edge out a little bit away from the wall so I get my expansion joint there. And then I'm just gonna draw my line right here. And then I'll just take my marker and I'll mark. And now that's my cutout right here for that. So there's a lot of different ways to cut plank. I use a jigsaw, I use a utility knife, um, but jigsaw works great for cuts like this. I'm just gonna get in, lift up a little bit, get the butt joint in. Once I get that in, then I can start working the rest of it in. So I had to use a little bit of a pry bar here too, kind of get this to lock in in the butt. Now I'm using this overlapping method again, which is similar to the method I was just sharing with you. The only difference is, is we are lining up the long joint perfectly still with the joint underneath and then using the cheater board to mark the cabinets out onto this plank. But I did line up the butt joint a little different and we will talk more about this method that I'm sharing with you throughout this video. So now this one is gonna be a little more funky. What we're gonna use is a pull bar to get this to lock in. Cause it's too hard to get in there. Using a pull bar is the way to get in these tight areas. Now this pull bar that I'm using, I'll leave a link for it. It's a nice heavy duty one. It's nice and solid steel, it has a lot of weight to it. It's not gonna bend on you. It's gonna really be a good bar for you to use for your project. Okay, so I have this spot where the stove goes and a lot of times this happens where the toe kick sticks out past the cabinet. Now, do you want to notch around that? Well, one of the things I like to do is I just like to undercut those with my jam saw. can see how that slides in there nice and freely. You can see on this side. So a lot of times on these cabinets, you get cabinets and you have, you spend all this money on cabinets and you have these things, these little spots that come out like I showed you here and there. You don't want to put quarter round around those. It's first of all, it's going to be tough to do. Second of all, it's not going to look as nice. So it's nice to undercut these things. So this is what the kitchen looks like and now the living room. You can see how we're gonna have to work the plank through both of these areas. Come around this wall out here into the hallway on the other side and reconnect. Well, this is really a simple process. What we're gonna do is we're gonna measure away from the plank on both sides through each of those doorways the same distance, the same amount. I chose 13 feet. It can be any amount that you wanna use. I want you to also notice that I made this these marks more towards the center of the hallway so that when we snap this line, the line would still be exposed for us to be able to see to keep the plank straight and make sure that we don't make any miscuts. So as I'm coming through the kitchen, I install a couple of rows and then I'll come to the living room and install a couple of rows. Then I can measure up to the line and make sure everything is still the same. Now the living room here it really isn't gonna be the problem on anything going off until I come around this side of these walls. But the kitchen area, it's easy in skinny areas like this to start drifting one way or the other. And by measuring to this line every couple of rows, it really will help stop you do that. Now the other thing that I need to do is I need to make sure I have another line inside of this kitchen area. So I need to measure up a certain amount. Let's just say it's three feet, it can be any amount, and I need to snap a line through over here to make sure that I keep this plank straight as I continue through the kitchen. Because all I'm doing is I'm taking a couple of scrap pieces that I have laying around, connected them to the floor. Now what I'm doing is hooking on now another piece. So now I'm gonna finish building off this row on each side of that plank. I'm gonna mark and cut the pieces that need to go in, put them into place, and I'm gonna use a scrap piece to straddle that butt joint, just like I showed you in the very beginning of the video, just to give that row some stability while I move it around and get it straight 
with that chalk line that we snapped on the floor. And then I'll use this cheater board to run it along the cabinet, mark these planks out, and now I'm gonna take them outside. Now once I cut these, I bring these back in and I'm gonna dry fit part of this. So you can see how I put in that one piece and now I'm putting in this other small piece along that cabinet. Well, I'm gonna pull that back out and I'm gonna install that later, which is really gonna be very simple to do. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want a place to secure this floor. I don't want to use those chintzy cheap spacers that you can get from Home Depot or Lowe's. I'm going to attach this scrap piece to the floor. We're going to get the row straight and then we're going to secure it with screws. This really gives me a solid foundation to work off of. It makes your plank installation go so much easier when you have a really solid floor to work off of. And I know that this is something that you're going to want to do too. Now you can see where we cut away this cabinet earlier. Oh, now I'm just sliding a plank underneath here. We didn't have to notch around that at all. I just use a tapping block, a scrap piece to hit that into place. Now underneath the dishwasher, you see how we have these front legs. I just install the plank underneath the front leg. And then when we put the plate on, it looks like the plank continually flows underneath the dishwasher. Now I need to continue on from the living room out into the hall so that we can come around that wall and reconnect this plank from the living room to the kitchen. And so what I did is I put a couple of scraps there again in this doorway and I'm gonna build off of this, the row that's actually gonna go where those scraps go. So once again, I get this all filled in. I cut in both sides from the tile to the wall. Now I'm gonna use that chalk line we snapped earlier. I'm gonna get this plank completely straight and then once again, we'll use the cheater board to mark this out. This really is so simple to do. The cheater board does all the tough work. The only thing you need to do is just make sure that you get your plank straight with that chalk line and you're good to go. Remember, this is gonna go in here. So you wanna make sure that that butt joint doesn't line up with any butt joints in these last couple of rows. We know this part of the floor is secured because it's connected to everything else right now. It's secure. This is where we want to secure. You can see how it moves. We don't want that to move. So one of the things that I like to do is take a scrap, stick that up against the wall, nice and tight. Okay, so we're 15 inches away there, and we're 15 inches away here. Right on, right around the seam area, what you're trying to do is drill a hole, pre-drill a hole through the plank, through the scrap plank, through the other plank, into the floor. Then you want to screw this into the floor, nice and tight. And you can sink it into the scrap because that's not going to damage it. And later on we'll pull this out and then there'll be a little hole there that'll be covered by the trim. And if it's not, because you pre-drilled it, you'll be able to fill it with wood filler if you need to. Okay, now I'm just going to hook a board up here. So I'm going to hook on two pieces here to fill this door. Now I just want to make sure, just so I don't find this joint right here up with a joint in one of those rows. So right about here looks pretty good. So I would actually start down there, work my way this way because here's the groove. Well, this is a situation where we're doing something a little more difficult. So I'm going to start in the difficult area right here and I'm going to work away from the groove that way, but then I'll have to work away from the tongue that way after I'm done cutting all of this in. So I'm going to connect the butt joint and then I'm going to connect to these pieces in the floor right here. So where this is connected to the floor right here, where it goes into the kitchen, I'm just gonna measure because it's connected. We know this is solid, we know this is right. I'm gonna measure to this line that we just snapped. Okay, so now I went down and I made sure my plank was all the six inches away from this line. Once I got it straight, then I started running my cheetah board down this wall. So you can see how easy this really is to come around a couple of walls and reconnect on the other side. You just need to pay attention to making sure that you keep things straight and all should go well. Now 
now that I'm finishing up putting this row in, now we're going to go and we're going to measure to the chalk line. We're going to get this row completely straight with our chalk line. And then I'm going to set scraps once again and screw through those scraps into the floor on every joint. Now doing this method, like I've told you before, is so much better than using those spacers. It's really important to get a good solid foundation to work off of and with using this method really helps with that. I'm going to hook a piece on here first. Now I'm going to take a piece right here to hook those two pieces on. Lock it in. Now you can see I have it where I want it to end. The jam till it hits and then bring it back out a smidge. I'll make a mark right there. And then I'm just going to come in about a quarter inch from that because it's going to run under deeper than what I have marked here. Make sure I'm still where I need to be. Okay, so now this is all secured all the way down. It's not going to move anywhere. So we're done with most of the hallway. We've reached the point where we need to do this last row right here. Now the easiest way to do this is just take your plank and overlap it right on top of this plank that you've already installed. I'm lining up the, the plank perfectly with the plank underneath. The only difference is, is I'm making sure I stagger the end joint differently than the plank underneath and in the last few rows. Then we'll take our cheater board, we'll mark these walls out. Really a lot easier if you can put a joint inside the doorway somewhere. It's going to be a lot easier to put this piece in and this piece in if there's a joint in the doorway. Whether it's a big huge long door or a small three foot door. Alright, so this is kind of a tough one to put in, so I'm going to get my hand underneath right here and get the at least get the butt joint locked in. And then get the rest of this kind of in. I'm going to shove that in there, and now I'm going to start hitting it all into joint. And I'm going to do that all the way throughout underneath here. So now we're in the short part of the hall and the goal is is not just to fill this in with full pieces all the way. You want to stagger these a little bit so that it looks nicer. So I'm just going to measure though because I can't get a full board in here to do my little measuring trick as usual. I'm at 40 inches so I'm just going to start cutting these at 39 and 3 quarter. What I really want to make sure that I do here and what's going to be helpful for you is to have a joint somewhere in this doorway to make it easier to put this last piece in. Now the other thing is, is I'm putting a T-mold right here in this door to the tile, so I'm just going to leave about a quarter inch gap. I'm not trying to get it super precise, I'm just eyeballing it. Now I want to slide my cheetah board under, make that mark, and then I'm going to slide it under this way. And then I can make my mark where I want it to end, which is going to be right there. Now, I've squared this off with a speed square, square with the locking system. So I know if I just slide this perfect, line it up with the locking system like I did there. The locking system's perfectly lined up. Now I know that I can make that mark there, and it's going to be accurate. Now, I've got this piece in place, and I can't slide it all the way. So what I like to do is take a scrap that I cut hook it on into the groove, the tongue is on there, just take my pole bar and I'll 
get it in place. Now I can slide this in and get it a little farther. Now I overcut my jam a little bit or got way good everything out of there so you can see the gap that I have there now. I was able to slide that piece in easily. And now I gotta bring it back to me. And so what I'm gonna do is just try to get it back a little bit so it's in there. I don't have it locked in anywhere. This is where my pull bar comes in. And I'm gonna hit it there. Now I still got that gap right there. Slide my pull bar in, give it a hit. There you go. Just because this is, I've been doing flooring for 30 years and I just came across liquid lock not too long ago. And what I did is I just shut the water off. Now I'm gonna flush. Dump it in, and now we wait. Okay, come on over here, I wanna show you. So this is about five minutes later. You can see that the water gelled up. You can see how it is. So now that will stop any water from coming out while I'm tipping it, I'm trying to pull it out of here. We emptied the tank. Now when we put this toilet back in, we'll just let the water run and the water will dissolve that gel again. And so I'll just take my utility knife and run it out, maybe not even quite that far, and just go ahead and get all that loose curl out of there. And then you want to try to get rid of all of this silicone. Now that I cut away the curl on the vinyl, I put some staples into the floor to secure the edge of the vinyl flooring. I mixed up some more floor fill to fill that gap along the tub. And I also had to feather out a minor height difference at the door. Now most vinyl plank, can, you can go right over the vinyl flooring without the need of any prep at all. And of course my situation was different. Now I measured away from the plank in the hall a couple of feet in two different spots. And then I extended my chalk line into the bathroom using those marks as my guide. I then snapped that line and this is going to help me keep that plank straight as we move into the bathroom. Now that I know that I have this all straight, I'm going to take my cheater board and I'm going to start marking this all out. Now I want to tell you that working away from a jam is a lot easier than working into a jam. So I always try not to have a joint anywhere in the doorway until I get to the end so I can actually end up having a joint something like that right here at the end to make it easy to get these pieces in. Slide it under, but if you just make a couple of marks then you can just connect the dots after. Right? So then I'm going to start going down this wall with my cheater board. I'm working backwards in this hall right now. Meaning that I'm putting the, here's the tongue right here, so I'm putting the groove into the tongue instead of the other way around. So it makes it a little more challenging, but not too bad. I'm going to take this piece and put it off to the side until later. I came through the door jam here and I wanted to get around this jam. Now I'm going to start installing a new row and we're going to secure this floor in here with some temporary scraps. Right where this comes together. I'm going to put one on the seam and then another one down here on the end. So I made sure I put that joint right in the door like I was telling you. Now I'm going to line this plank up so the locking system is lined up all the way so we know it's straight. I got it lined up right there. I'm going to make my mark, come down. I'll do the same thing on this side. So now I'll just go and notch out these two real quick. Good. I still have my bolts in here, so I gotta stab through these. Now I'm just gonna take my tuck knife here that I have this tool that I use. You're going to see there's a perfect circle there. OK, 
Okay, so there's a little about a quarter inch, maybe a little more. That's fine. That's how we're gonna leave it. Come over to this side, do the same thing. Okay, so now I know where the sides end. Now I'm gonna come to the bottom here. And now I'm gonna mark where that would end. Get it on place and all that is locking in nicely. All right, so I don't have much of a gap there. You can see it's just a little, it's a little less than an eighth inch. You can see the, which is fine because I put a good um expansion gap over here so if we're a little close here that's fine we want to caulk this and make this look nice but all silicone now we've arrived at the stair now this stair nose is an overlapping stair nose meaning it overlaps the plank and then the other edge covers the raw nose of the stair now every manufacturer is different with these nosings and i do have a video you can watch to make sure that you buy the correct nosing and it's video number 14 in the plank boot camp playlist so now that I know where I need to end the plank at the stair, I started to build this row. Now you can see that this row's got a lot going on. I have the closet door on one side and then the door to the basement stairs on the other. Now this might seem to be intimidating, but using the methods of building out this row with the scrap pieces and then using the cheater board to mark the jams and the walls onto the plank, it actually makes the situation pretty simple. Now more than likely, you're gonna have situations just like this and you can be confident to know that you can charge right through these. Now it just takes a little bit of thought on how to build the row out properly. And by the way, if you find yourself in a situation, you can leave a comment below the video and I'll be more than happy to help you if I can. Now just remember, the cheetah board is error proof and it's your best tool. So have confidence in the cheetah board. Slides in there nicely. Get it to lock in. Okay, so I have a situation here where I'm not going to have to do any notching around this jam. I'm just going to slide this piece forward to where it needs to go. Now I'm just going to put a scrap piece in here, grab my pull bar, and then I'm going to just give it a good tap. Okay, so this is going to be really a tough piece for me to get in. Okay, so I'm going to slide this piece in now, and you can see how we're clearing the locking system all the way down. Feed this one back into there. Get that pulled over. All right, so now I'm gonna lock this one in here. Get everything kinda in place where it's supposed to be. We're putting a T-mold in along this tile. This big gap's going to get covered up. Now we're moving into this room here, and to keep this plank straight while we're moving into this room and we want to cut along these walls, we want to snap a reference line up here to keep that plank straight, as all I do is measure up a certain amount. Now this can be any amount. Let's say that I measure in and that's 10 feet. Now I'll measure from here to the outside wall. Whatever that distance is, I'd let's say it's three feet. Come over here, measure down the three feet or whatever it would be for you and then snap that line all the way through. Of course, you wanna hit your marks, not like what I just did there. Now we'll hook on some scrap pieces to this plank and then we're gonna connect plank to these scrap pieces, just like I've showed you in some other areas and then we're going to get this plank perfectly straight with the line that we have 
as a reference line up here. So measure down and get this plank all straight with that line. Take your cheetah board, mark these walls out onto this plank. Once you do that, you'll take this apart, cut that plank, come on back in, and then let's install this row. Now, you're going to go back to your reference line again, starting from, get your measurement from right here where it's connected to the floor, measure from here to the line, get this plank that same distance away, all the way, and then you'll secure this floor to keep it from moving. And now you're ready to continue on into this room. Now we're moving into the office with the plank installation. And the technique that I'm showing you here, this is how you would do it with any installing into any room when the plank runs parallel to the door. Now this is my son-in-law Brady and he's also a professional installer. And he uses some different techniques that I want to share with you. Now this is actually a great tip for those of you who do this for a living or like a professional handyman. It's going to save you time. Now we all know time is money. So now instead of marking the board with a marker and then cutting it with the utility knife or a jigsaw, he's just running his knife alongside the cheater board, saving himself from doing that stuff. Now I like to do it the other way, but hey, to each his own. Now when he gets to the jams, he then uses his marker to avoid overcutting and to get a more precise measurement. Now you can also see he's using a smaller cheater board to get into this little tighter area. Now having multiple cheetah boards for an installation, that's very common to do. So keep that in mind for your installation. It's almost together. Perfect. So you see how we lifted it up a little bit, not even very much, just a smidge to get it locked in there. Now it's perfect. Everything's nice and tight. Maybe go up to a pretty big gap. So you can leave a pretty big gap or you can go down to, it's a little bigger than an eighth of an inch. And just slide in there. You just put one down at the end. I'd stick that in there. If this sit does work pretty good. Down there it probably needs to be tightened a little. Let's tighten that up. There we go. Now we're coming up to this closet where we need to go around the door jam and also cut into this wall at the same time. We've gotten to a point where we can't go any farther. If we put another plank in here, it would hit. So that's all we're gonna do in here is we're gonna attach a scrap piece right here. We're gonna cut a piece that goes from where this plank ends to the back wall right here. So we're gonna connect it right to that scrap piece, run it all the way to the back wall now what was most important here is that we made sure this joint and this joint lined up perfectly. And now we'll go ahead, we'll make, we'll take our cheetah board and mark out this wall and this door jam. And then once we're done with this, we're going to continue on. We have a vent we're going to cut around, another jam here, and then this back wall. So there's two rows left to go in here, okay? So one row would be right here, and then here would be our next row. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark and cut this last row before we install this row that I just showed you. What we did here is we just take the plank now and we'll make 
we'll, we'll, we'll get it to come all the way from wall to where the jam ends here. Okay, now we'll take our cheater board and mark this wall out onto this plank. And then we'll take this plank, go cut it, put it off to the side, and now we'll come back and we'll install this row. Next. And then when, once we're done with that, installing this row, we'll take those pieces that we just cut for this wall and install them. I was a cut off from a back of the wall. So we're just going to take our marking board and mark along this. Okay, so now we cut this last row in, we took that out, now we're installing this row I was telling you about. Now we're to a point where we're going to hit this door jam and this back wall here. So now the setup here is we're going to overlap plank right on top of this plank that we already have installed, lining up this butt joint perfectly with this butt joint, and lining up this locking system perfectly. So as you can see, it can be real easy to mismark something like this. So make sure you draw it out, think it out, then cut it out. So we're to a point now where everything's done and we're ready to start taking out these scrap pieces that we put in as securing the floor. Because this is vinyl plank, I can get away with a small gap like that. And then either use a matching caulk or silicone, matching silicone, to the plank or to the brick and fill in that gap with that. The other thing I can do is I can put quarter round around this fireplace because the brick is pretty flat. Now obviously if you have a stone you can't do that. Another thing that I could do is I could run a rope around this. A rope and I could paint that rope. I could use a rope that I found at the hardware store to be able to hide around that gap. Okay, so I'm just taking a scrap from the box. Now this is a perforated edge here that I tore off. It's perfectly straight. Now what I want to do is come back here and make sure that I mark this cardboard perfectly right where that ends right there. Now I can draw this out. Use that as my template. Came up there and now I have my line there still from what I drew earlier. So I have my angle now. So. You can kind of see how I'm away from the joint here. I can't go any farther. If I came this way anymore, then it would hit and it wouldn't go down. Okay, so now I'm just lining all of this plank up making sure that the butt joint right here doesn't line up with the butt joint in this row. You can see it's right there. 
And I know it's hard to see, but the locking system is being lined up perfectly right here, so I know I'm sitting right on top of it. So as you can see, working backwards, it's not really that difficult at all. It just takes a little bit more time. Now, always use a scrap piece with the tapping block when you work backwards, because if you damage that tongue, the plank isn't gonna go together. The groove is so much more forgiving. Now, as I mark out this last row, I wanna to talk to you about a few things. You see how I made this notch in the plank? This was needed here so that that gap wouldn't be visible. Now, I have a video for exterior doors and it's video number 13. Now, there's some great info in that video that I'm sure will help you. Now, also for the finishing touches in areas where you know, you're gonna need some transitions, watch video number two. Now, at the 45 minute mark, I'll show you how to install all the different transitions that are available to you. Now, as a matter of fact, that entire video, that would be super helpful for you. If you only watch two videos of mine, it would be this one and video number two, and that would be enough to really give you the meat and potatoes of any plank installation. Now, they're both packed with a lot of good info that I know would give you the confidence that you need to start. Now, you got this. Now you just need to go and start. Now I've shared a lot of resources with you here. Um, showed you where you can go on the Plank Boot Camp playlist on my channel to go check out all those videos. You know, below every video, including this one, all the links to the tools and things that you would need for your installation are below those videos. So just click on the description. You'll find everything you're looking for right there. Now I wanna talk to you about one more resource now, for Plank Boot Camp. I have a Plank Bootcamp membership on my membership site, which is called Laminate University. And I'm gonna put a link below for that so you can click on it. You can come in there, share your drawing. I'll walk through with you on where to start, your plank direction. Hey, and if you have any questions along the way where you might be stuck on something, you can share pics with me and we can, I can walk you through anything that you might be stumped on or stumbling on. And I also have a plank installation guide in there, which will walk you through your entire plank installation. It'll walk you through step by step of everything that you need to do. Some broken down short videos in there for you to watch. It will really help you. I know it will. So go check that out if you're interested. Now I want to pray for you. I pray that God strips you of any fear that you might have to do this project. I pray that God works with you through your hands so that you have the confidence to be able to do the things that you need to do for this project. Work through their hands, God. Give them the skills that they need. And I also pray that God blesses you and your family. And I pray for this in Jesus' name. A couple more things here. If you liked this video, hit that subscribe button. You'll, and then the bell so that you can get notified if you want to see more of my videos. Also, hit that like button if I've earned your like there. And then down there by the like button, there's something new to YouTube. It's a heart down there. You can click on that heart and donate to the channel. And I really do appreciate your support if you decide to do that. My family and I can't thank you enough for that. Now, I'm Joe Latender. I'll see you in the next video.